Now, the new album, I've been struggling to find a great word to describe it, but uh, there's a lot of uh, diversity on the album. Was that a goal going in, or just did that come organically? I think it really came organically. We wrote uh, 33 songs going into the record, and out of those, we you literally found the last 12 that are on the record. And those are really just the best of the best, and they flowed well together, and it ended up becoming really diverse. Um, and that's a great way to describe the word of it, and that's the first I've heard that, but that really is what the record is. I think it shows a lot of growth in the band and in our songwriting and how much we've changed as musicians from four or five years ago when we did the Ton of Madness. Not that that wasn't a great record that we were really proud of. It is. But you always want to you always want to grow as a musician and I think we have and we just want to keep getting better uh, every day. And you guys did something really cool with it. You did that ebook component. Whose idea was that? That really started with the label. The label was like, hey, we got this guy that's doing these new things. We want to try it out with you guys. Are you interested? And we really didn't understand the concept until they kind of showed us a couple demos of what it can do on the iPad and we went, wow, this is really cool. Yes, let's do this. So it took us a good two, three months of compiling data and going through the interview process to get the, the interview portions of the book and finding all the old photos and things like that and having people come out to the studio and take pictures then. It was, a, it was definitely a labor of love, but it turned out really cool. We were really proud of that. And, and it opens the band up, kind of gives uh, fans a, a little look into, you know, the workings of the band. Were you guys a little hesitant to kind of share that insider info? Yeah, we are. Especially Brent and myself, we tend to be a little bit more private than uh, Zach and Eric. They get out there, they do a lot more of the Facebook type stuff, and they're a little bit more out there. I'm, I'm a pretty reserved kind of person, and Brent's even more so than me. So sometimes it's hard to put ourselves out there, but at the same time, we look at it as gone are the days of rock and roll when it was a mystery you know, the lives of the rock stars and stuff like that. Now everything is out there, so you have to give more of yourself so the fans get a better understanding of who you are. And that's just what connects them to you, and that's why we have such great fans and great relationships with them and, and you know, with radio and everything else, is because we put ourselves out there in, in every way that we can. So, And you guys being the first, like, major band to do that type of ebook deal, do you think a lot of uh, bands will follow your lead now? I hope so, because I'd like to see it with other bands. You know, even the bands that I'm, I'm friends with, it's kind of cool to see the inner workings because you don't get to sit there with them in the studio. You don't get to be the fly on the wall in the studio environment. And it's very different in the songwriting and the studio environment than it is when we're out here on the road. Um, for us, it's almost a painful process to be in the studio. I think each one of us pretty much had a nervous breakdown making this record because we put so much pressure on ourselves to be better musicians and to play the songs perfectly and to create the perfect songs. So it's def- definitely a different environment. I'm sure it is for other bands as well. The lead single off the new album was Bully, and uh, now it's not hard to tell kind of what that song's about, but I was curious if there was a specific case that inspired that song, or was it just the topic in general that the band wanted to address? It was really just the topic in general. It came out, I think, at the time when we were writing that song, there was, uh, there was some stuff on the news, just happened to be in the background kind of deal, and we're like, you know, that's, we all have had that in our lives, whether we've been bullied or witness bullying, and I think most people are, and people can relate to that. And it's, uh, for us, it was kind of starting to go, I'm not going to take it anymore, and, and kind of let that emotion out that we've all been through in the past. And the band does this great uh, ability, uh, I think you guys are, are rare, there's a few bands out there that do it, but you have a great ability to balance both like the harder edge tunes that you do, and then kind of the softer songs that you do, like the ballads and stuff like that, and uh, I think sometimes that might throw people for a loop when they listen to you, they don't know what to expect. Yeah, and, and it's, I think it goes back to your original comment of, of the first day of the record, and also we're very diverse, we just write songs from the heart, we write on a song, if that's the emotion that comes out, and it happens be a slow tempo that it, it is what it is and it does for people poorly sometimes because you come out with a song like Adrenaline that's just pummeling and then you go into a song like Hammer or Rolls or, or even I'll Follow You um, it is a very different take on things but we're musicians and we like to experience those I actually as a drummer enjoy playing the slow songs more which is I think it's kind of weird for a drummer but I think it's slow songs are much harder to play as a musician than fast songs you really have to work hard to keep it feeling good Get the meter there and create that pocket of groove in a slow environment. So I really actually enjoy playing the slow song more. Anybody can play a million beats per second, but if you can just make it feel good, that's what's important. And you guys have a song on the new Avengers soundtrack. How did that project come about? Uh, I think that came through a relationship with Disney from when we did the um, soundtrack for what was that movie, Alice in Wonderland. And so they called us again and said, hey, we're doing this. We'd love to have you guys. Do you have a song for it? We said, yeah, we think so. So after we got done with our European run a couple months back, I uh, flew up to Charleston where Eric Obispo has a studio, went in, cut the drums for it, did some guitar stuff 
on it if you already have the vocals done and put it together and set it off and it turned out great. It was a fun, quick, easy song to do. Yeah, and, and you're on a soundtrack with a, with a ton of great bands and like the first Soundgarden song in a long time. Did it kind of make you feel a little bit better being on that soundtrack when you saw who else was involved? Yeah, it's good company, definitely. We didn't know who was going to be on it when we did the song and it was nice to see especially Soundgarden were huge fans of theirs and they, you know, they were a formative band for me back when the back in my high school years, so it was nice to be in that kind of company. It's always good to be in company. It's a band you respect and like. But it brings the question now, is the band or members of the band, are you guys comic book fans? I am. I'm a huge nerd. <laughs> Absolutely a nerd. So where do, you, where do you fall? Like Superman, Spider-Man, Batman? Where do you lean your nerdity? Uh, I would say I'm Spider-Man through and through. Um, ever since a kid, I got my first Spider-Man from my, my cousin who was older than me. He gave me his comic book collection, and uh, from then on, I always enjoyed comic books and, and graphic novels and things like that. I'm actually a very good friend of mine, Rob Pryor, is a comic book artist. He did my uh, front page from Heads for this tour, and he's also putting me in his last hand painted graphic novel called Blood Merchant. I'm going to be a character in there. It's you know, a totally different character. I think I'm like a killer vampire or something, but uh, he's drawing me as one of the characters, which is like, really cool. You guys seem to be on the road constantly. It's it's like uh, album, tour forever, album, tour forever. Uh, do you guys, have you developed some odd habits and rituals on the road? There's always the odd rituals, but I think they're, when it comes to it, there's certain things you have to have, certain things you have to do. We've, uh, we've recently, I guess, on this tour, become really health conscious, which is not the most rock and roll thing, but it's just the truth. And so we have to have our time for our workouts before the show. We do an insanity workout at like 4 o'clock, and we have to put that window together to do insanity for an hour. And then the show, and then we have uh, before the show, an hour before the show, it's called duty time. It's not what you think. <laughs> a ritual where we have all the whole band and crew get together and scream, do, 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 at the top of your lungs. That kind of happened over the course of years until you start seeing stars and uh, you drink your beer. So it's just one of those, we have those small little rituals that are kind of, happen within the family but they're they have to happen every day before show <laughs> and, and who in the band uh, smells the worst getting up on the bus <laughs> well actually clean freaks nobody smells bad <laughs> who that smells worse. <laughs> well that's a good bus to travel on then i've been on some tour buses man and yours would be the first one i've been on that was clean yeah ours is clean we wipe down with clocks wipes and actually clean the floors every day and we all shower at night so yeah we're anti-rock star i guess we're <laughs> geeks well, no, it, it means if you go to a Shinedown show, it's pretty much germ-free. That I think that's a selling point. Yeah, there you go. 